if you guys see my YouTube short I posted a few days ago, you can see that I've been having a lot of trouble filming this video, so hopefully this is the one that goes out. Hi, my name is Bree, and welcome back to my channel. I don't know if you guys noticed, but I've also bought a little microphone, so we'll see if it helps the audio. If you guys think the audio has improved, then let me know in the comments. Uh, then I will continue using the microphone. But on a serious note, we're going to be talking about what's been going on in the extreme horror book community. So what is extreme horror? Extreme horror is a genre of horror, which is basically extreme. From what I can gather, it is a lot of books with like dark topics. So like that's just like the stuff I'm going to put on the screen since I don't want to say it and have YouTube take down my video. So I want to also make a note that I am not a part of this community. I do not like reading these books. Like even just the mention of, word, of any of those words is a turn off for me but I do not judge those who want to read that genre or that's like a fan of the genre so you know let's be respectful of what others like to read especially if they're different from your own personal preferences so even though I'm not a part of the extreme horror book community I feel like this is an important topic that we should talk about and that we should you know like bring aware to the book community as a whole because what I'm about to get into is something that authors should absolutely never do. And I'm also going to refer back to my video that I previously posted, should authors be allowed in book review spaces? Of course, my answer is if an author cannot handle criticism, they should not be in review spaces. Reviews are for readers, so I suggest going back and watching that video. So anyway, let's jump right into today's video. It's going to be, this is going to be a long video, so buckle up. So first, let's talk about what's been going on in the extreme horror book community. So to basically sum it up, there is a book reviewer named Haley. She is a book reviewer here on YouTube. Her channel will be linked below in the description if you want to go check her out. So she wrote a review on a book from author Matt Shaw who I will explain in a moment. Basically to clear it up, she did not like the book. She found a lot of issues with the book and she posted a video where she explained why she hates the book, which I will also leave down below in the description if you want to go check it out. So who exactly is Matt Shaw? He is a writer of the extreme horror genre and he highly reviewed one of his books. So Matt got a wing of the book review. I'm not sure if he found it himself by searching his name or if a fan sent him a link to the video. However, he ended up coming across the book review and he was not happy. So here on this Facebook screenshot is from Matt Shaw's official Facebook page. So he goes to say, what a weird thing to wake up to, a reviewer attacking one of my books. Not a problem, but then going on an epic rant about certain groups of people who aren't included in that book. Dating that author such as myself don't care about them. Mm, okay, so I guess moving forward, every book I write will have token characters relating to all various groups of people now. So no one feels left out, so, and so this Karen can't feel offended on their behalf. Although listening to this lady's rant, I think she'll find reason to be offended while staying firm in her belief that male extreme horror authors write what they do because it is what they are like in real life. On that note, a quick aside, I've been doing this for over 10 years full time. I travel the world for dining and meet and greet because of what I write. So ask yourself, am I writing this because it's who I am in real life or because it's basically opened the world for me and provided a good career for a decade? Anyway, what's really weird is I had to flick through the comments and someone was pretending to be me. I've had people do this before but not normally in a video that's essentially attacking my work not a problem, and me as a person, that's more about the person making the video. Some of the other comments on there were idiotic too, with people stating they refund books that offer, that offended them, which again told me all I need to know about this woman's channel. Basically, it's the Cool Karen Club, uh, yay, not the triple K. The video was then collectively known as the Cuckoo. Oh, and taking a leaf from her book, funnily enough, she's supposed to be writing the best book ever. 
This post contains my views and opinions and I am entitled to them, so if you don't like them, dot dot dot. And then there's a gif of a guy who's playing a violin. So let's break that down real quick. Well first off, this he shouldn't have even made this post public. Although at the time he did not mention who the reviewer was, but he shouldn't have made a public comment about this. If anything, he should have maybe just said this to like his friend or like in a private setting rather than posting it on the internet for everyone to see. Issue number two is how he feels like he needs to defend himself and his career. He needs to separate himself from his art. I should also say like if you cannot take criticism, then you should not be putting your work out there publicly for people to you know, have access to it and be able to criticize it. Authors shouldn't be in review spaces if they cannot handle the criticism and that reviews are for readers. So for Matt that's to hear and watch that video, it was clearly not for him and he shouldn't have made a comment on that. But I wanted to address the uh, comments of someone pretending to be him. Kelly did clear this up and she even posted the comment on her one of her TikToks. It actually is one of her friends who was just joking around. So the comment was, I'm a man with whimmed and I guess it's Time to admit my last name is Ashley Shaw, so thanks for dragging my amazing book on this drive. I'll leave that there for you guys to decide. Anyways, on the same day, Matt also writes another post. It is no secret that I find a certain YouTuber to be tossed as trash. Thankfully, I don't pay much attention until someone tags me in content and then I wish my head would just explode. Someone who is happy to trash other authors while wanting to be an author themselves. But the world is full of negative Nelly and they're not worth their time or attention. They'll continue to spread their vapid opinions while demanding people to listen to them. While pretending to be champion for all minorities, we don't need these people. What we need in life is people who spread positivity and here is a perfect example of this one person. So he ends up basically just promoting like another viewer. Again, he meets another public post about the reviewer Haley. Although he doesn't use her name, um, this should not have been made publicly for his fan and other people to see. So then, let's move forward a little bit so Haley gets a book dedicated to her but not in a way that is expected or or I should say in a way that should never have happened so Matt Shaw writes another book and he writes a dedication to her from what I can gather it was posted in early 2023 but Haley didn't see this dedication until back in August of 2023. This is the dedication. For Haley, you hate it when men write through the eyes of a woman so much and yet you inspired me to write this book which I am sure you will never read and that is fine. That being said, I am surprised at how much time you spent moaning about male authors misrepresenting people and groups when you could have spent more time enjoying the things which do not upset your delicate sensitivity. Art can be enjoyed by anyone, art can be created by anyone, only not the dictate otherwise. You trout. P.S. Yes, I spelt your name wrong on purpose. Wow. Um, okay. So, of course, Haley found out about this dedication and she, rightfully so, left a bad review on this book without reading it, by the way. Um, and I encourage that you guys don't go and read this and I also want to mention that I tried looking the book up on Goodreads and I couldn't find it so I don't know if Goodreads took it down or if the author himself took it down so Haley gave this book a one-star review rightfully so and wrote apparently this book is about me according to the author's comments on Facebook nice to know I can be bring valid criticism to everything I read for him and rather than taking a step back separating himself from his art and understanding that it's my job as a reviewer to give honest reviews he writes book he writes a book about me I really live in his mind rent free if he's not using me for clout his CP though right so I guess this is the lesser evil
And then now I'm going to show you the screenshot in which he's referring to from his Facebook post. So he posted this on January 29th. So again, this is the beginning of this 2023. This book is dedicated to this trout called Haley, who gets all 51 men right through the eyes of a woman and also gets offended when men, men represent other groups they have no business writing about too. Anyways, I've been having a blast with it. The book was the book is a romance written through the eyes of a woman by a man because F you, that's why. And then he goes on to list a sample which I am not going to share because I do not want anyone to read what I had to read. So here, Matt really states who the reviewer is as we can refer, you know, looking back from his other Facebook post, it's clear that he named the reviewer now which is Yeist. But it's also Yeist because he also wrote a book dedicated to her which by the way if you cannot pick it up on it an author should absolutely never do this and then on the comment of the same post um i guess a fan named sean wrote lol i think i know this Haley." and matt comment i don't know what you were talking about cough cough so he's clearly interacting with his fans about Haley and his fans are you know playing along with it, which I think is absolutely disgusting. And then I also found a Twitter post where Matt writes, you know, I think Haley fancies me. And a woman named Jess comments, she really does. And then Matt comments back, clearly needs her eyes tested with a photo of a disfigured man. I think we can all see what kind of character Matt is. I think the most ironic thing about this whole situation was this tweet that Haley ended up finding from Matt's Twitter account where it states where he wrote if you're an author and you get upset by a bad review being published you are in the wrong business you must be thick thin you need to hear the poor reviews which state why they didn't like the book and learn from it sometimes they're more valuable than good reviews and ironically enough I do agree with that statement that he wrote um, but he should really follow his own advice. So I want to break down Matt's Facebook post. So this is like his latest statement within the last time he's going to be addressed in this. So let's jump into it. New day, same BS. This will be the last time I address this current situation between myself and a certain YouTube inter individual. Brace yourself, there's going to be a long one. There is misinformation misinformation being spread about myself. Number one, I wrote torture blank book based on this person. Not true, I have never written a book about this person and never would. As my readers know, I actually offer up for them to be in my book as either a good or a bad person. It's something my readers love, so why would I do it for someone who hates my work? But then why would you also dedicate a book to someone that hates your work? That, that doesn't make sense. Number two, I dedicated a book to someone because they gave me a one star review. This is not the case, but Matt, it is the case. You literally said this is for Haley, and there's evidence to back that up. Before we go further, we need to understand why the dedication in the first place. This individual did a YouTube video that men should not write female characters because they are not, they are no good at it. It got my brain ticking and I had the idea to do a romance book written through the eyes of a woman by a man and as per the tagline, because F you, that's why. My readers know my sense of humor and the book was well received. However, the book would not have existed had it not been for that comment. So yeah, the book was dedicated to the first name biased only. There were no links to them, no links to their work. It is also noted that within the dedication of states art is suggestive. One person trashes another's treasure, etc. But Matt promoted the book saying he dedicated it to Haley, to the YouTuber, like he said in this very session. I stand by my comment though that no one should dictate what a person should and shouldn't write or read. Because you don't like it doesn't mean another wrong. I actually do agree with that point. I horrible it is to agree with this man, but I do agree with that point. Has this person given me a one star review before? I don't know. If they have, I have not seen it. Although I am repeatedly told about the video in which she insults me as a person and labels myself and others as a predator while encouraging people to stop supporting. What I can state now is this reviewer has now given me one face star review. That's not a fake one star review. That he had a right to do that. 
Number three, bad review. The moment this reviewer says they do not leave fake one star reviews on a fake star on a fake one star review, it's the moment they lose credibility, especially when lying about other things. That's just declaring I wrote a torture book about her. The truth about reviewers, we all get bad reviews. You cannot please everyone and really shouldn't bother to because you will go insane from doing so. In truth, many bad reviews actually sell books more than the good review. I had one person who said my writing was awful and I needed help. I made that as my banner tan line for book signings and the book they were talking about sells out at convention. Apparently there were the faith review was done in order to get my attention because it's all I pay attention to apparently. For the sake of clarity, I have Messenger, my Facebook business page has a contact section, and I even have a WhatsApp group with my readers in it, not forgetting my email address, which is readily available. In short, I am not hard to reach, but this individual, individual chose to this particular route to find me, and that's where it starts to get more interesting. I'm glad that Haley took this publicly, because it not only does it shine a light on Matt and his bad behavior, but it also protects Haley too. So number four, an open invite. I invited this person to do a podcast with me, with someone unbiased as a moderator, in which we could discuss the horror community and genre as a whole. She repeatedly states she feels unsafe and pushed out by the community. We will get to this later, and no one should feel that. I was ready to hear her point. I was ready to try and learn from them, and hopefully she would have heard my point and such. We could then work together to try and help you feel more inclusive in this industry. In regard to feeling unsafe in the community, I understand as to why she might feel shunned due to the comments made about her, but there are comments made for a reason. For example, she tells all readers who don't have triggers to have a good look at themselves and ask what, the, what sort of person they are. You cannot, just make com- you cannot make such a comment without such readers getting agitated by it. People will and do read what they want, and yet here is someone outwardly judging them. Given her day job, this is somewhat of a surprise to me, but there you go. She attacks a number of readers with such a comment and gets a backlash from it. I try and converse with her and see if we can actually understand each other's viewpoint, and I am met with the same backlash from those who comment without knowing the full story which brings us to. Number five, the victim card. The worst story of person in the world is the one who plays victim. In a good read, it stands where I made the offer to go on a podcast and remain polite throughout. She declined to offer because I stare her. She has seen all my comments about her and it's a natural reaction for a woman to be stared at men in this world. Firstly, my comments have, which made, made, which isn't often, been more to do with not watching her videos because I don't like the content and negativity for the sake of it. It's in my thing. Also, her voice annoys me, which is fine to stay given the insults she throws my way and has for a long time now. Also, this is my opinion, which is something she likes to say a lot, and how she is entitled to her opinion and will not be silenced by a man. The thing is, when I have generally been stared or someone, I tend to avoid them. Social media gives us plenty of ways to block people. I have not called them a prick on Instagram. I have not repeatedly called them an insult or an effing insult, and I have not gone public asking for people to step up to them either. I mean, they're a scary person, so why would I? But she is apparently stared at me. Matt, this is not about you. Don't go about turning this on you. Just because you may act a certain way doesn't mean others would. And not to get like, you know, like all political here, but women have the right to feel scared of men. Considering what men do to women, that's just like, I don't know, that that rubs me the wrong way. Meanwhile, today I have four death threats on TikTok and a number of her supporters admitting to giving me one star review. Even if, per- even if this person did just do one face review, the fact they actively encourage others to leave face reviews is not a good sign either. So even though I clearly do not like Matt, um, I think it's wrong for people to send death threats to one another um, and call in, like people's names and stuff. The so one thing that we should do as a community is not send death threats, um, but rather like educate people as to why they shouldn't interact with this person or like support this person's work but at the end of the day like no death threats like that just I shouldn't even have to explain why that's messed up but it's messed up. As for it's natural for women to be scared of men in this world no it really isn't it's tragic for women to feel this way or for anyone for that matter and if you do actually feel that way to an entire step whom you also are continually attacked on video, then it would suggest some help is needed and that it is not written as an insult but through genuine concern. 
there's enough hatred in this world. There's enough, there's enough hatred and wrong in the world to not feel unsafe because of every man or woman is a good boy back both ways. So again, with my comment I made before about that women having like the right to feel scared of men in the world, I mean, I shouldn't have to explain why, but we have to be more cautious because we don't know what a man's intentions are. They could be the sweetest man you can ever meet, but then in an instant, if they don't get their way, they can snap and turn on us and we reveal your shame. I mean, yes, it can definitely go both ways. A woman can totally do that to a man too, but it happens more to women. So number six, before this person replies to my comment on Gurus, I made an open invocation on TikTok too. She stitched the open and follows it with the pity me post, which works as her friends have gone on the attack, the review, the death threat, the name calling. They then started accusing me of deleting the original video because they couldn't find it, although it had been reported on to TikTok and TikTok removed it. However, I appealed that decision because it wasn't an attack and it certainly didn't go against their guideline. TikTok reviewed it, agreed, and put the video back to its original standard so people can see for themselves. I haven't bullied or even named named her. Now, I tried to organize an adult conversation with someone in order to try and make things better for everyone. It had unfortunately been met with reached down in two, fair enough, and name calling across most platforms and people who never read me thinking they will never read me. Not a problem. Because the answer was so reached down and no, I have muted this person across all platforms. I am capable of doing that on so. I have never seen their post again. People who threatened me with death threats were reported and the comments were moved and hopefully account too. And the people who restored it to name calling have also had TikTok remove their comments and strike their action for breaching of terms. I think the saddest part of this for me is that I was willing to have a conversation with someone who clearly doesn't like me in order to try and make things better for us and everyone. But it was a no, a no go. Also, a also sad is the amount of people who hear one side of a story and instantly believe it and start stating my own behavior is disappointing, but that's fine. As I have always said from day one, including about bad reviews, everyone is welcome to their own opinion. And if you read this and take offense to the kind of person that I am, I was never really the author for you anyway, yet I never, I don't wish bad things on you. Again, the world has enough crap in it and we have our own battle to fight. So why wish more on someone? That's it. That's the message. And again, I won't be discussing it further. But yes, if there is someone out there who hates extreme horror and they want to have a debate as to why it's bad, I genuinely think it can make a great podcast talk and have had podcasters reach out to me asking to host it so do get in touch. I think it's sad that he used it as a way to kind of like promote like oh hey like let's go on a podcast and talk about this after all of that like I just think it that that rubs me the wrong way that you're using it as like a self-promotion kind of thing but yeah that is my final statement about the situation and you guys know my comments but I think the reason why Haley is also getting a lot of hate is because she made a collaboration video with another book reviewer named Aspen where they talk about the negatives and the positives of the extreme horror book community, which has Matt referred to several times. I will leave both of those videos down below in the description if you want to go watch them for yourself. I think they are very interesting and they both bring up really good points that I feel like you can not only use just in the extreme horror book community, but that you can use in the book community at all. So you would think that would be it after everything with what Matt put out there and Haley calling him out on his, on his BS. However, I found this interesting TikTok video where I'm gonna, I'm gonna play it here and we're gonna digest it together. I really didn't think we'd be here, but I have an update to the Matt Shaw situation. So I want you to watch the following clip. Book review, uh, which is one star. Um, I don't mind a one star review because it shows you made it as an author, you know. It's no longer your mum and dad and family members rating your book, it's strangers and they just happen to think your work shit. But it's more believable if you have some one star reviews and just as well, for I have many. Um, this particular one star review got under my skin though because it's particularly vicious, not about the book, but about me. They were questioning my mental health and how sick I must be to write such trash. Well, I went away and I took their review on board and. 
I wrote fucking filth in response to them. A sticky mess from the author of Sick Bastards with a message to the reviewer on the back, which basically just tells him to eat shit. Um, the story itself follows a guy who has a weird fetish. He likes things that smell disgusting to people like you and me. So, you know. If this is not Matt talking about Haley. This is not Matt talking about Haley's review or dedicating a book to Haley. This is Matt dedicating a book to another woman. This is a pattern. This is a serial offender. So explain to me now both sides of the story. He has consistently gone after women. He has dedicated books to two female reviewers. He wrote a book about a real life person, Amber Heard. And no one says the word misogyny. No fellow authors. No splatterpunk reviewers. Mm, but there are two sides and people shouldn't judge us for what we read. We're not judging you for what you read. We are judging you for not speaking out against misogyny. So knowing what you know now, are you going to continue to make videos about how you feel picked on because of what you read? Or are you going to actually make an impact and stand up for what's right? So apparently this is not the first and only time that Matt has done this to a reviewer and it is truly disgusting behavior and this is something that authors should absolutely never do. So let's take what Matt has done and basically teach yourself to not do this. So the reason why I made this video is to give information out to the book community because I feel like it is so important that as a community we not only stand behind Haley and support her and send her so much positivity and love, but that we also are made aware of Matt Shaw and that we do not support this man and we also take a lesson from this. So to wrap up some final thoughts. Obviously, authors, please do not behave like this. This is not, authors want to be treated as professional. Well, this is not professional behavior. And especially, this gives a bad rep to indie authors. It's bad, you know, it's hard enough for indie authors having to break out on their own. And given like this bad rep, it's, it's just more harmful for them. So, keep in mind, not all indie authors do this. There's maybe like a, 2% of authors that behave like Matt Shaw, the other 98% do not act like this and they are also like fantastic writers. So please support indie authors. That's it for today's video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoy. Comment down below your thoughts about this situation. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and ring that bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. Until next time, I will see you next Thursday. Bye.